Let's start with a very simple question. Where do profits come from? Put it differently. Why is it that enterprises can typically expect to receive revenues that exceed their costs? Now, when faced with, with this question, many will answer saying something along the lines of, well, profits are a return that entrepreneurs receive for their efforts and for their risks. Now, that's plausible enough. There's certainly a lot of very hardworking and entrepreneurial people out there running businesses and earning a profit. But you can also travel to some of the poorest and least developed places in the world and observe very hardworking, incredibly enterprising people taking life and death risks and still living in poverty quite apart from their efforts. In fact, in many of those places, back-breaking hard work and a daily hustle are the only way to just survive. No profits, just survival. At the same time, you can also observe a lot of people earning profits without doing much at all. For example, trust fund beneficiaries and owners of large diversified wealth portfolios. All of this suggests profits are not fundamentally a result of effort or enterprise, even if effort and enterprise may be involved in some profit making. So what are profits a result of fundamentally? Let's put the question a little bit differently. What are the things that need to happen in an economy in order for enterprises to be generally able to make profits? Now, as with all economic outcomes, it turns out that profits are a social outcome. A number of things need to be in place in an economy and its broader society in order to make it possible for the typical enterprise to be profitable. Some of these things are not very controversial among economists. Most of us would agree that profit-making requires the existence of a government that is capable of enforcing property rights, the rule of law, and the operation of market principles in the running of the economy. Other things that are needed to maintain the general possibility of profits are generally accepted, but only implicitly. We don't talk about them very much. As Teresa will discuss in her module, monetary authorities like the Federal Reserve in the United States or the European Central Bank in Europe often intervene in the economy to defend profits at the expense of wages. Central banks are charged with maintaining stability in the level of prices. In situations where an economy is experiencing high inflation, monetary authorities typically try to ease pressures on prices, not by targeting profits, but by targeting wages. In fact, many economists think that inflation should be controlled with long spells of high unemployment that keep wages from increasing, quote-unquote, too much. While this is presented as something needed to maintain stability in prices, it also tips the scales in favor of employers, boosting their ability to make profits. Then there are other things that are absolutely necessary for profits to be generally possible in an economy, but most economists either ignore those things or deem them unimportant. And as you probably expect already, those are exactly the things that we're going to be discussing in this lesson. Mm -hmm.